Bollywood, food stalls, call centers, bull carts, papad, curry houses, and the moon landing of 1969. Blah, 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 blah. Yep, you guessed it. These are just a few of the side-splitting anecdotes some Western folks, particularly those from the UK, have been cooking up on social media. But wait, why is the West turning India's Chandrayaan 3 launch into a comedy cosmic show on the global stage? Now, I won't bore you with every technical detail from the mission's inception to its development stages. Instead, I will dive into the captivating highlights that make Chandrayaan 3 an absolute standout. Choosing the lunar south pole as a landing site was no walk in the park. This daring feat was accomplished amidst challenging terrains of craters and deep trenches. Not to mention, the sun's illumination is relatively scarce at the moon's south pole, rendering in a state of eternal shadow. Consequently, this region poses problems for the spacecraft's solar panels, its colder communication is trickier, and a single hitch could spell catastrophe. The significance of communication in space missions cannot be overstated. Even a minor glitch can lead to devastating consequences. Take the example of Japan's Hitomi X-ray astronomy satellite, which lost contact due to a communication system failure. So why did India decide to navigate the South Pole's hurdles? It's not just about uncharted exploration or the urge to plant a flag and proclaim. Jai Hind, Mera Bharat Mahan. The real draw lies in the region's potential water ice concentration. This ice is a crucial resource for future lunar expeditions, serving as drinking water, food, production material, and even rocket fuel. Discovering water ice is important because Moon's water ice as rocket fuel boasts advantages like renewability, cost effectiveness, and environmental friendliness. Previous lunar missions approximated that the Moon hosts a staggering 1.3 trillion pounds of water ice. NASA's Artemis program, for example, plans to map and use it on the Moon. Although Although this technology is still in early stages, it holds immense potential for space exploration. But let's not stop there. The moon's south pole holds even more captivating secrets, drawing us into a realm of potential and discovery. The moon's surface harbors valuable minerals and metals. Helium-3, for instance, is an important rare isotope for nuclear fusion fuel, offering cleaner and more abundant energy. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, scientists discovered that the moon's regolith contains traces of helium-3. Let's dive even deeper into the significance of the moon's south pole. The moon's south pole is believed to have higher deposits of helium-3 compared to the other areas. This is primarily because the moon's polar regions receive less sunlight due to the tilt of its axis, resulting in permanently shadowed areas that are extremely cold. These shadowed regions are thought to have trapped helium-3 over billions of years as the element is implanted by the solar wind. And here is where the intrigue deepens. Chandrayaan 3's choice of the moon's south pole as its target is not just by the chance. Its mission's objective hint at a strategic significance too. But before lunar surface exploration to happen, a formidable launch was imperative to position Chandrayaan 3 in Earth's orbit. Enter the mighty CE-20 engine, a masterpiece developed by the Liquid Propulsion Systems Center, LPSC. This cryogenic rocket engine employs liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen as fuel for upper rocket stages. Engineered by the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, its thrust-to-weight ratio stands at 34.7, much efficient, very competitive and cost-effective than many other cryogenic engines. As we delve into the engine's design and construction, the story of its development unfolds, revealing a narrative of global intentions with notable roles played by the United States and Russia. The story goes like this. India wanted to launch heavier satellites into the orbit and needed a powerful cryogenic engines for that. It signed a deal with Russia in 1991 to get two cryogenic engines and the technology to make more. However, the US intervened, labeling it a violation of the Missile Technology Control Regime, MTCR. This MTCR was formed in 1987 by the G7 industrialized countries. Why did the US oppose? Well, holding the most advanced weapons and militaries in the world, America thought transfer of technology could help India as to make missiles. You see that? America was so kind and helpful, it wanted to 
prevent India from becoming a potential rival or threat. How thoughtful of them, see? The United States was so generous, it offered to sell its own cryogenic engines to India. But the price was so high, it was like, uh, say for example, selling water to a fish in the middle of the ocean for $800 million per engine. That's more than three times the price that Russia had agreed to sell its cryogenic engines and technology to India for just $235 million. India rejected the US offer as unfair and unreasonable and insisted on honoring its contract with Russia. Meanwhile, Russia played a bit of number game here, offering just seven engines and adding a cleverly unexpected twist. They said, no tech tricks, just seven inches for you, India. It's like we got an amazing gift box wrapped with the colorful ribbons, but when you see, there is no gift inside. With no better option, India embarked on a journey to develop the technology itself. The path wasn't smooth, with years of sweat, setbacks, and probably a few scrambled eggs. Yet, in 2014, India triumphed by launching its first GSLV Mark III with an indigenous cryogenic engine, claiming its space in the Elite Club. Congratulations, India. This triumphant narrative symbolizes resilience, innovation, and unwavering spirit that defied odds and reached further stars. Let's step out of the flashback episode and return to the unfolding chapters of Chandrayaan 3's saga. Now, let us shift our focus from rocket engines to trajectory. Let's delve into an interesting trajectory topic. Despite being India's heaviest rocket, the launch vehicle Mark III, used for Chandrayaan's 3 launch, lacked the necessary power to send the spacecraft directly towards the moon. To overcome this challenge, scientists turned to the trajectory path utilized by Mangalyan, India's mission to Mars. Mangalyan used a Hormone Transfer Orbit to reach Mars. This ingenious approach inspired Chandrayaan-3 to embark on a captivating trajectory around Earth, skillfully harnessing our planet's gravitational pull before setting a course for the Moon. From the date of the launch on 14th July 2023 to the day it entered Moon's orbit on August 5th, Chandrayaan-3 took an interesting trajectory route. What is trajectory, by the way? Trajectory is the path that an object follows when it is moving under the influence of some force, such as gravity. For example, a ball you throw follows a curved trajectory due to Earth's gravity. Here's a nugget. Chandrayaan-3 took 40 days to reach the Moon. In comparison, NASA's Apollo took 4 days, Chinese Chang'e 5 took 8 days, and Russia's Luna 25 took 5. Why the 40-day journey then? The answer lies in the trajectory chosen. Take a look at these pictures. On the left is Chinese Chang'e's five lunar spacecraft taking a direct trajectory path. On to the right of the screen is the animation of Chandrayaan's 3 around Earth. The spacecraft was revolving around Earth and changed its orbit again and again around five times before it leave to lunar transit orbit. This is called gradual trajectory. Compare the direct trajectory of Chinese Chang'e 5 with Chandrayaan's three-path orbiting Earth, a gradual trajectory. I think ISRO have mastered the technique of using gradual trajectory. The spacecraft will first enter a parking orbit around Earth, then use the Earth's gravity to slingshot itself towards the Moon. Look at the animation again. As the spacecraft moved closer to the Earth, it gained momentum from its gravity. When it moved farther away, less fuel was needed to maintain its course. This iterative process unfolded over six orbits, propelling Chandrayaan-3 far enough and fast enough to break free from Earth's grasp and enter the Moon's orbit, before eventually landing on the Moon's surface. But how does a spacecraft absorb the power of Earth's gravity and use it to boost its maneuver? This technique isn't unfamiliar. Think of a short putter using a sling to harness relative moment and gravity. Similarly, Chandrayaan-3 employed a technique called gravity assist, aligning with Earth's gravity to perfect its gradual trajectory. But moon landing isn't as simple as short put throw. It is a complex technique that requires precise calculations and careful planning. Here, I want to specially mention a powerful tool called LDV, which ensured that the spacecraft was on the correct trajectory and could make adjustments as needed. LDV stands for Laser Doppler Velocimeter, and it is an instrument that uses laser beams to measure the velocity and distance of a moving object. I'll soon be delving into the remarkable benefits of LDV, including its contribution to space debris management. Coming back to gravity assist, it's a powerful technique that uses the gravity of a planet 
or a moon, for example, to change the trajectory of a spacecraft, similar to a free cosmic gas station. It's like a free way to amplify the spacecraft speed. Of course, the technique has been used by NASA, ESA, and other space agencies on missions such as Juno, Rosetta, and our own Mars Orbiter mission. Yet, Chandrayaan-3 claimed its distinction as the most cost-efficient mission to do so. Overall, gravity assist is a very versatile and efficient technique that can be used to launch spacecraft to a wide range of destinations. ISRO's use of gravity assist in Chandrayaan-3 mission is a sign of its growing capabilities and its commitment to exploring the moon. As we conclude this episode, let's acknowledge the exceptional benefits of Chandrayaan's three chosen trajectory. Not only did it conserve valuable fuel, but it also aligned perfectly with India's ethos of responsible exploration and innovation. But this is only just the beginning of our journey. As we transition to part two, the cosmic canvas shifts, revealing new dimensions of Chandrayaan's three's mission. In part two, we will dive into the fascinating world of responsibility that accompanies space exploration. But that's not all. We will also uncover the benefits reaped from this extraordinary mission. And uh, let's not forget the spine-tingling launching terror that every space agency faces. I am Pradeep Paspaledi, and this is Third Eye signing off. Join us as we embark on Chandrayaan's three remarkable voyage. Stay happy, stay healthy, and stay curious.